6 and 5 says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I just come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, telling you thank you, because you carried the cross, and the 
they nailed you to that cross. But you could have came down at any time. But it was because of your love for me. Even though I didn't know you, you still love me. And I just want to simply say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And in that name, that powerful name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together, open our mouths, and bless the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. For the Lord is great yes, and is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. He's awesome. He's mighty. He's worthy. He's holy. He's everything that we could possibly ever need in our lives. And in this moment, we're going to stand on our feet and we're going to declare the good works of the Lord. Hallelujah. For he's worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. And we're going to give him praise on this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus, say, he's mighty, he's awesome, he's holy, he's worthy, yes, he is, king of kings, yeah, song says, our God is an awesome God, and he reigns forever and ever, our God is an awesome God, and he reigns forever and ever. And he reigns forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever, come on, say forever and ever, forever and ever, oh, our God is a mighty God, and he reigns forever and ever, our God is a mighty God, and he reigns forever and ever. And he reigns forever and ever, say, our God is a mighty God, and he reigns forever and ever, 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 for
come through for us and for that reason alone he is worthy of all of the praise we bless your name Jesus in this place hmm. thank you Lord he is the king of glory hallelujah he got up so we can live again hallelujah we bless your name Jesus hallelujah you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give your name the glory, Jesus. Oh. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Father, we just want to be with you. just want to be with you yeah just want to be with you so yes the world will bow down
just wanna and we'll sing hallelujah until you come again yeah yeah and we'll dance in your presence until you come again yeah i'll just sing hallelujah until you Until you come again, we will sing hallelujah. Cause you worthy, nobody like you, and we'll dance in your presence. Master, we'll dance. Yeah, we will sing hallelujah. Until you come. like 
like your presence, Jesus. Nothing like your presence until you come. He's the King of Glory. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You have to learn to bow before the King. Yeah, you're in the presence of royalty. He's King of Kings, which means He's above all. Yeah, He's given us a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Come on, that he's Lord, he's Lord, he's Lord, he's ruler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dominion, power, honor, all of that belongs to your king. And if you believe that on this morning, I need you to open up your mouth. Uh, come on, and bless the king of kings this morning. He's worthy to be praised. He's your king. Yeah. Victory. He defeated death and the grave for you. Listen, we're going to talk about it, but the tomb was empty. <laughs> they came looking for him, but he wasn't there. I, I don't think you have grasped what I'm talking about. To know that your Savior died, but death and the grave couldn't hold him down. Which means it doesn't matter what you're going through even at this current moment. When you think about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what you're going through because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in you. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So even if you're going through, he's able to pull you out. I don't care what it is that you're facing. Your God is worthy to be praised even on a resurrection Monday. Even on a resurrection morning, you can get up. Yeah. Matter of fact, I speak to you right now and tell you to get up out of that situation. Watch this. See, it's not that you're in a place, but your mind has taken you to a place. The tomb was empty. And sometimes we approach God empty. Even on this morning, some of you are empty. Needing him to fill you up, but you won't even open up your mouth and usher in the presence of God so that you can be filled. It's not about who's around you. It's about who's in you. Oh, you better hear me this morning. Don't get caught up in who's around you. <laughs> you better focus on who's in you. Because when you're desperate for God, Maybe I don't have any desperate people here this morning. Maybe everything is going well in your life. Maybe you're good, but when you have folk that are desperate for him, you're willing to press through, push through whoever and whatever you need to, to get to him. Yes. Hallelujah. I thought maybe when we disqualified suits and all that stuff, you'll come in and praise God like he deserved to be praised. I said, no son, to go to meeting suits. We wear t-shirts where you can be comfortable and, and really praise him, but you, you come in still stiff. Why you came? Can I ask you a, a real question? Why you came this morning? If you didn't come to praise God, then why did you come? 
Come on, what's the purpose? You gotta have a purpose in why you do what you do. I told you before, we don't get a check mark just for coming to church. God is not pleased because you showed up this morning. God is pleased in your praise. God is pleased in your worship when you learn how to give him what he deserves. Yeah, he's worthy to be praised. Now, I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds to open up your mouth on this morning and usher in the presence of God. Come on, bless God like you love him this morning. Bless God like he woke you up this morning. Bless God like he saved you this morning. Hallelujah. Anything that's dead need to be buried. We are alive. We're lively stones. And I don't know about you, but he's done so much for me that I wouldn't dare let rocks cry out for me because the rocks wasn't there. Oh, you. When he brought you out of that pit, <laughs> when he delivered you out of that mess. Come on, these people wasn't there. So I dare you come in and let other folks stop you from giving God praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. I'm going to keep saying that he's worthy to be praised. Hopefully you'll catch fire. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun, until the going down of the sand, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I don't feel like sitting down. Why well, sit down when he got up? <laughs> the problem is we're sitting down too long. We comfortable sitting down. He laid down and then got up. I don't know who I come to talk to this morning, but you've been laying too long. It's time for you to get up. Shake that off of you. Shake off depression. Get that off of you. Shake off oppression. Come on, get that off of you. Yeah, I, 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 just shake a little bit. Come on, some of y'all are too stiff. Shake, just shake. Maybe somebody need to grab you and shake you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Can you give it up one more time for the King of Kings? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We greet you today in divine love. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, to Holy Spirit. Thirdly, to my beautiful wife. Last but not least, to you, the people of God. Can you bless God for yourselves? Amen. It was hard getting up this morning? It, you didn't want to get up? Amen. I'm trying to figure out. I like being around a live folk. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here this morning all dead. Come with you. He got up. Oh, yes. 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 He got up. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. This is a very special time of our service. We want to acknowledge all of our first time visitors, anyone visiting with the family of Kingdom Life for the first time. Let me see, let me see your hands. Amen. 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 Keep your hands up. I think we have some tokens. Do we have we have gift cards? Don't we have? Okay, they're up here. Amen. Keep your hands up. Here you go. Now, if you're not a part of Kingdom Life, but you're visiting, if it's not your first time, but you're still visiting, let me see your hands. All right, we'll catch you. Amen. Put your hand down. You know. They say they want some gas too. Amen. I see a hand right here. 
Catch, catch my brother. Catch my brother. All right, some more over there. All right, I gave you three, D. Season. Now look, 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 look who got their hand up. Look, look right here. Now look at you, look at look at him. Maxine ain't driving and say she want a gas car. Maxine said, I'm gonna get to who driving me. That's who I'm gonna. Hey Amen. We thank you so much for being here. Listen, our services has been enhanced just by your mere presence. Now, we have a few more cards left. Maybe I'll do something. Maybe I'll ask you some Jesus questions. Maybe y'all will ask that. Hey, Amen. So we'll make sure we pass them out, and maybe whoever really needs some gas, you can get them, huh? We'll spend a little change on them, so we'll make sure some members can get them now, I guess, everybody else. All right, members, y'all ain't got to look at me sideways. We'll Make sure you get one. Now, look, we don't have one for everybody, so if you don't need it, don't get it, all right? Amen. Amen. You heard me? All right. Come on, bless God one more time for our visitors. Thank you so much for worshiping with us on the day. Listen, our services has already been enhanced just by your mere presence. That's only one question, I mean, only one point we ask of you, that you don't make this your last time worshiping with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Make them feel real special. After this next song of preparation, I will come back to you with the word of God. Come on, receive our anointed praise team at this time. victory. The grave could not conceive him. The grave could not hold him. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we bless your Oh, yeah. 
his praise. Hallelujah. He holds our 
our futures Not just my life But your life is worth Don't give up Your life is worth It might not feel good right now But it's his will Your life is worth You might be going through and struggling But your life
that I should die. Come on, what grace? <laughs> grace and mercy said, Go. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I've already paid the price. Yeah. You see, I once was blind. But thank God I can see. And I'm living in this moment. And oh, cause salvation is free. Everybody see your grace, your grace and mercy. Come on, think about what he's done. those songs that like that I grew up on. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Them the, them the songs, Mama and them. And elders who prayed fervently. Who believed God when things looked impossible. See, that was their real praise and worshipers then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When they didn't know how they was going to get food on the table, pray. Uh, we too small now. We too small now, y'all. We, we've forgotten. But I'm grateful for his grace and his mercies. Come on, can you bless God for his grace and mercy? Can you bless God for our anointed praise team and our dear sister Marcella Ratcliffe? Come on, bless God for them. Hallelujah. Woo, we done been to church already. That's, that's some good church. Hey, Amen. Man, I love them songs. See. Never forget the foundation. Yeah, sometimes we look and we say that's, that's old. But boy, it was those songs like that. Oh, man. Matthew chapter 28. Start at verse 1. It reads, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, Magdalene, and other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothes was as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the, to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen.
as he said. You may be seated in the presence. On your way down, just touch your neighbor and say, new life. New life. I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, I like new stuff. Now, y'all going to get here and act, act funny this morning? Some of you had to go get new shoes to wear with your shirt today. Because yeah. <laughs> you like new stuff. You would dare. You would not dare put on a new shirt with old shoes. Something about new. New represents a new beginning. And when you think about Jesus and his death, it looked like the end. But the truth is, the end was the beginning. Oh, if you can hear me on that one. See, in life sometimes, it looks like you're at the end of your rope. Like I can't take any more. This, this, this is it. If anything else happens, Lord, I don't know if I can handle it. But it's in those moments that God gives you the strength that you didn't know you had. Even when it looks like you've been forsaken. Just know Jesus himself dealt with abandonment. As he hung on the cross for you and I. And the moment he transferred, the moment sin was transferred, our sin was transferred to him, his father left him. Because a holy God could not dwell in the presence of sin. I need you to hear this. And so Jesus, his father had always been with him. Since the beginning. And now to be on the cross. And now I need you at the most. This is when I need you the most. And you're no longer present. Have you ever been in a predicament? Or in a space where you felt like Jesus was not there? You've helped me along the way. And now I really need you at this point, And you're not there. Abandonment. Even when it looks like you've been abandoned. Just know he's working. When you can't even see it, just know that he's working. Because what looked like abandonment was really preparing him for relationship. And now he gives up the ghost. They hung him on the cross. Have you ever been left hanging? Oh, boy, I can preach right there. Have, have you ever been left hanging by people who said they would be there? By folk who you thought had your best interest at heart? But when you really needed them, they left you hanging. That's what they did to our Savior. They left him hanging. The folk who just was a couple of days ago saying, King of glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name. Oh, they was excited. We talked about it last week. How folk can celebrate you one day and crucify you the same day. No, I didn't move from next. They'll crucify you the same day. How folk will lay down stuff for you. And then leave you naked when you really need it. The Bible said they laid down their clothes as he walked in. But now he's laying on the cross naked. See, don't get caught up in these pictures that we post now. And it, oh, Lord, I don't even want to go there. With this Caucasian Jesus that, that we've seen for years. Let me, let me help us. We've seen these pictures posted in our homes for years. And what we didn't realize, the enemy was using that to disqualify us as even being a part of the family. 
So in our mind, we thought that he didn't look like us. So we couldn't see ourselves the way he saw us. Because there was a picture that had been painted of who he wasn't. But we was told he was. So now when we talk about liberty and he died for me, it's hard for us to receive that. He For me? Because we didn't think that color, y'all ain't going to say nothing, will lay down a life for me. That's not Jesus. Y'all better hear me. That's not him. But there was an image portrayed that it was him. And because of that, we always thought that we was afar. When he'd been calling us to come nigh. If you read the text, it tells you what he looked like. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why it's important, my brothers and sisters, for us to study to show ourselves approved. So you don't have people presenting a Jesus to you that don't look like you. And the truth is, the, the Caucasian brothers and sisters really know more than we know. They know what he looked like. They know who he was. They know where he came from. That's too much for me to go into, y'all. Pastor, what are you painting that picture? Stop thinking that you are far. When Jesus died to bring you near. He laid down his life so that you can have life. And not only have life, but that you can experience it more abundantly. So in other words, he says, I didn't come to lay down my life just for you to merely exist. Because some folk are comfortable with just existing. When he says, my death paid more than you just existing. Me getting up paid for more than you just existing. I came that you may experience life on a new level. Oh, boy, I hope you hear me on a new level. Because that level that you are trying to experience me on is not me. I got up, but you still serving a dead God. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. The Bible says, here's the challenge, my brothers and sisters. People have been trying to discredit the resurrection years. And the resurrection is the foundation of our faith. Without the resurrection, why are we here? What do we have? If Jesus didn't get up, what is we preaching? Are you with me? He didn't just die. See, because some folks just talk about it's at the cross, it's at the cross. But he didn't stay on the cross. So if I just preach the cross, then I miss the resurrection. It's the resurrection that we need. Oh, you better hear me. Because without the resurrection, there is no life. If he didn't get up, then how did we get up? There is no victory without the resurrection. And it's true. They tried to discredit, but they couldn't. All the other Religious leaders that they said was the one, they're still in the grave. Buddha, I don't want to go down the line. Buddha, Muhammad, you know, the good brother. They're still in the grave. But your Savior, Jesus, is not there. Can I help you out? He's here. I said he's here. He's in you. So you don't believe you even know, but that's that's shouting to know that Jesus lives in you. Here's what I want you to see, because when you talk about new life, new life starts when the sun rises. I'm not talking about the S-U-N. I'm talking about the S-O-N. I'll prove it. Here it is in verse 1. It says, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. The Bible says it was the first day 
at the week, the beginning of dawn, which means whenever there's dawn, that means that a little light has appeared before the sunrise. It's at the dawn of day that gives you insight on what's about to happen. Because before the dawn of day, there's darkness. I don't know who I'm talking to because somebody in darkness this morning. You're going through some dark things in your life right now. But what you don't realize, dawn is on the way. Dawn is on the way. And dawn means that there's a glimpse of light that's about to shine before the sun rise. Because the sun did rise. I'm not talking about the sun that we get up to every morning. I'm talking about the sun. He rose because they came looking for him. Here it is. The Bible said the women came, two of them came looking for Jesus. The question is, why would they come looking for him? Evidently, they heard about him. Evidently, they heard about his story because Jesus went around telling his story. He prophesied his death burial, and resurrection. He says, in three days, the temple will be destroyed. He said, in three days, the temple will be destroyed, but in three days, the temple will be raised again. And because folk are corner-minded, they're natural-minded, they're thinking he's talking about a physical temple. Just like us, when we talk about church, we think we're talking about this building. A building not made by man's hands. You are the temple of God. The Holy Ghost live in you. You're the church, and that's the problem because we don't know who we are. We just come to church. Not understanding that you are the church, and wherever you go, the church is there. So that's why I tell you, you don't get a check mark by coming to the building. The dawn is the first appearance of light in the sky before sunrise. God sent me here to tell you that dark days are over because the light has come to shine on you. The light has come to shine on you. In your darkness, the light has come to shine on you. Weeping may endure for a night. I know you've been weeping for a long time. It feels like a long time. But what you don't realize, it only endures for a night. Joy is on the way. Why? Because I've never seen a night that lasted. Joy is coming because it comes in the morning. Your darkness will become morning in a minute. You just need to hold on. Now, I don't know what you came for. I didn't come to, hey, he got up. I didn't come to give you that. I come that he rise up in you to let you know that you. See, you, you don't need to wait on the resurrection. The resurrection is already here. It's in you. You got up. He got up. I ain't come to tell you that one. I come to tell you to get up. He got up. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with that. I like to get a little wine up in you, you know. I just don't wind it up like that, but you know. Here it is. Psalms 30 and 5 says, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. You need favor for life. I told you before, favor will get you things money can't buy. Everybody want money. Give me favor. God can't trust some of us with money no way. We lose. We already losing our mind. So we show sure enough get a little change. Let Ron get some money. You know how we do. I'm gonna get the Lord something when I when I get a little better. I'm gonna give the Lord something. You ain't giving what you got now. Here it is. It's a new day for us. Not only the sun rise, but look what he says. In verse 2, he says, Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. I come also to tell you that power was released. Not man's power. 
this power came from on high. Because the stone that needed to be rolled away, a man couldn't roll it away. See, there's some stones in your life that's blocking the entrance of God coming into your life. The truth is, some of us have put stones at the door of our lives. You've blocked him from coming in. Why? Because you don't want to change. Oh, yeah, on this resurrection. See, the new life is present, but you like the old life. The new life is too challenging. The new life calls for accountability. And because we don't want nobody checking us, we'd rather stay in the old life. When God is saying, no, baby, I need you out of that. I died for you to have new life. And you're comfortable with that old stuff? You won't mix shoes, but you'll mix other stuff? I'm oppressed. Here it is. New birth starts when old life is buried. The new birth starts when your old life is buried. Are you willing to bury the old, though? See, resurrection can't happen until something is buried. What are you willing to bury? Watch this. In order for new life to take place, God says you must re- he must release his power and shake up the foundation. See, the earthquake came to shake up some stuff. So in other words, God says, I will allow some stuff to come to shake up the earth. Why? Because you've forgotten who the foundation is. You've forgotten that I'm the foundation on, ev- on which everything is built. And I'll allow COVID to come. I'll allow disasters to come. Why? To shake up the foundation. Because you're trying to build on something that won't last. God has allowed many disasters to come into this world, not for the world, but for the church. Because we forget who it is who died for us. We've become like the world. We've gotten comfortable with the things of the world. Pastor, I didn't come here for this, huh? We're talking about new life. We've gotten comfortable. So what God says, no, baby, you need to realize that I'm the foundation. And you've left the foundation. And you're trying to build your own foundation. But what you don't know is that foundation will not stand because some storms are going to come. Some trials are going to come. Death is going to come. Tribulation is going to come. And if your life that you've been so-called building is not built on the right foundation, on Christ, a solid rock I stand. All other ground. See, y'all too new for that. Whenever you want to wake up a person, you do what? God says that's what I'm doing to the church. Because we've fallen asleep. And so I allow stuff to come to shake you. Here. I allow it to happen, to shake you. And you're saying, why? God says, I know why. Because you sleep. Many of us are sleepwalking. And wondering why we bump into all kind of stuff. I didn't say you wasn't saved, but you sleepwalk. <laughs> Jesus are familiar with folk that sleep. You hear me, Quinn? He was in the garden and needed help, but the folk that were with him were sleep. He in the garden. He said, could y'all just pray with me? I, just one hour. See, folk ain't want, they don't want to pray with you. They want to play with you, but they don't want to pray with you. He said, give me a little bit of time. Just give me a little bit of time. And he came back. and they, Everybody trying to get disease in. He came back and he said, you, you sleep again? Here in a time of his life where he needed folk the most, 
praying to his daddy, if there be another way, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will. The problem is we're trying to carry out our will and not God's will. We're ego-driven. We want us to get the credit. But we ain't willing to lay down our lives. I said, so he come again the third time and they still say, he said, go ahead and get your rest. See, some folk, you just got to leave them sleep. <laughs> they, some folk don't want to wake up. So just let them rest on, but don't you go to sleep with them. I hope you get that part. Because some of us, when they sleep, I might as well go to sleep. The devil is a lie. You sleep on, I'm going to keep working. (laughs) Poverty will creep in on the slumber. Some of us sleep too long. I wonder why we broke. You don't want to get up to go to work. I ain't talking about y'all, I'm talking about other people. The Bible says, if the foundation be shaken, what shall the righteous do? When we think about the foundation, if this foundation of this world be shaken, this society be shaken, which it has and will continue to be shaken, what does the righteous, what we do? Do we run? Do we scatter? If you know who your foundation is, you're not moved by what's going on. Why? Because you know your foundation that you stand on is sure. But if you're questioning your foundation, that means you're not sure. Are you with me? Psalms 11 and 3, the Amplified Version says, If the foundation of a godly society are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the flood came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. I didn't say trials wouldn't come. They will. You're not exempt. I'm not exempt. None of us are exempt from trials. But when your foundation is built on the right foundation, it doesn't matter what comes your way, you will withstand. Storms will come. You remember the three little pigs? Y'all remember that one. Here it is. Three things I want to point out as it relates to foundation. Make sure that your foundation of love is built right. You hear me? Because some folk are trying to love, but they don't have their foundation right. And Jesus said, I so love that I gave. So love is the foundation. And if you're trying to build and not willing to give, then you're not building right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about love, what it is and what it's not. He says, and get, he, gets, he goes down the verse and says, love is kind, love is patient. Love is, not, love is long-suffering. Love doesn't think evil. Now, if you're always thinking evil, that ain't love. If you're always speaking negative, that ain't love. But then he goes on to say, love never fails. Prophecy will cease. All this stuff will go away, but the one thing that will remain is love. So if you're not building your relationship even on the foundation of love, it won't stand. Oh, we quiet in this Christian church now. You can't build it on looks. She fine now. <laughs> After a while. And by and by. You know this dirt going to get <laughs> You know it ain't nothing but dirt and clay, right? And after a while and by and by. It ain't going to stay the same. You can't clone it. I'm telling you what I love. That's the truth. 
So don't get caught up in looks. If you're basing it on looks, that will change. If you're basing it on good jobs, they change too. <laughs> Occupations change. Folk change jobs every week now. <laughs> so you can't build it on that. He might have a good job today, but next week might not have a good job. So you can't build it on that. The only thing that's sure is the love that God has given. Are you with me? Y'all right? All right. The next thing I want to talk about is your faith, the foundation of your faith. Because your faith is what you have. When you're against all odds, it's what you believe determines how you're going to come out. Faith. Your foundation of your faith is even being challenged right now. Folk telling you what we're celebrating right now didn't even happen. So do you believe that or are you just going through the motion? Are you serving a God that you really don't believe in? If you are, then I'm going to ask you why. Because there's some other stuff you can do that you do believe in. But the one thing that you cannot allow anyone to shake is your faith. Because when it's all said and done, that's all you have. <laughs> Hear me. Folk will come and tell you all kind of stuff as it relates to God. And if your faith is not built on the right foundation, right. folk are walking away from the faith right now and blaming it on COVID. They were gone before COVID. <laughs> COVID just exposed where you really were. You blame it on COVID. COVID won around, but a few years. You, you've been backsliding for eight. <laughs> it is. The next thing you can't, you have to make sure that the foundation of the word is what you build on. The word, the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of God. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Shall remain forever. That's Isaiah 40 and 8. The word of God will remain. When all else fails, you got to have a word. Because there'll be moments in your life you can't get to your church. You can't get to your pastor. You need the word in your mouth. So that you can pray. You hear me? So that you can speak the word. He'll listen to you just as, just as well as he listen to me. You're in relationship with him. You don't just need nobody to speak on your behalf. You speak to him. Are you with me? Here's what the text says. The angel rolled away the stone. Now, it reminds me somewhat of when Lazarus died. So you got to realize when Jesus came, everything he did was showing symbolic to what was going to happen. Yeah. Lazarus was really for, foreshadowing what he was going to do. Y'all with me? They say Lazarus was dead. And, and folk got mad. Why do you think Mary was the one that needed to be there first? Because she was one of them doubting one. If you would have been here. There ain't no coincidence Mary had to be there. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. That's what she told Jesus. Jesus looked at her and said, Dad. He said, I am the resurrection. Before the resurrection, he says, I am the resurrection. He said, you talking about he dead, Lazarus sleep. See, what you don't realize, sleep is the closest form of death. So let me help you out. Every time you wake up out of your sleep, you've been resurrected. See, you might take that for granted, but that's some folk go to sleep and don't get up. You think you just nod and got on the, uh. oh, you better thank God for resurrection. You, you could have you died in your sleep. 
<laughs> we, we take stuff for granted. But th- look, in the text, in, in John chapter 11, he had spectators around, so he told them to roll away the stone. Physically. Natural-minded folk. You get involved. He said, but with this one, I don't need you. I let the angel move this one. Yeah, because I don't need you saying Jesus came out because you helped him. Oh, you know how folk do. I rolled that stone. That's the only way Lazarus came out because I rolled away the stone. (laughs) Folk want credit for your resurrection. People need to see new life, not your old life. So whenever you remove the stone, people will see Jesus. As long as you keep the stone there, they only see you. Because the Bible declares, watch this now, it's not that God sees us. When he looks, he sees Jesus. That's why I told you Jesus is in us. Because Jesus was the only one that pleased him, not us. So when he see us, he don't see us. He see the blood. You better hear me. Colossians chapter 3 talks about it like this. He says, our lives are hidden in Christ. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, our lives shall appear with him. Why? Because our lives are hid in him. You ought to thank God for a hidden life. Not you hiding, but for a hidden life. See, thank God that he he hides us from certain stuff. Oh, I thank God for that. Because there's some stuff that we can be exposed to that he keep us from. Oh, Lord. So whenever Christ show up, you showed up. Why? Because our life is in Christ. When he was resurrected, you were resurrected. When he got up, we got up. Are you with me? Third thing I want you to see is sometimes God has to awaken in us so that we can get understanding. In all of our getting, let us get understanding. Verse 4 says, and the guard sh- And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women. Notice now, the guard shook and was afraid. He never said anything. He only spoke to the women and told them, fear not. Which shows world versus believers. Even sometimes we fear, but our fear shouldn't be like the world. We can fear, but our fear should be reverence, honor, not afraid of what God's going to do to us. Are you hearing me? Because most times we're afraid God will do this. That's not the type of God you serve. Why do you think you serve a bad God that's looking to punish you? He wants you blessed. But there's requirements to being blessed. So he tells them, don't be afraid. Fear not. Why? Because you don't really understand. See, you showed up with no understanding. And many of us show up with no understanding. You you had knowledge of him, but you didn't have understanding. Because you knew. That's why you came to the tomb. Because you heard. He talked about his resurrection. And you heard him talk about it. Because if not, you wouldn't have never showed up here. I hope you see that. But you showed up with no understanding. You showed up with false hope. How many times have you showed up with false hope? You didn't really come expecting. You came questioning. You came just to see. You didn't come believing. You came to see was he real. You came to really see. Well, I've been hearing him talk about he was going was to get up in three days. Did he, is he really going to get up? But if you come in faith, you already know. I come expecting. That's how you ought to enter here, expecting. Not, not with this false hope that we say, Lord, if you will. 
Here it is. Ephesians 5 and 4 says, Therefore, he say, Awaken you, O sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. He will give you light. His desire is to shine light in your darkness. His desire is to give you beauty for ashes. Here it is, Philippians 3 and 8 say, yet indeed, I also count all things. This is Paul talking. He says, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubbish. For I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him. Do you really want to know him? He says that I may know him. Not just I just heard of him. No, I want to know him. In the power of his resurrection. In the fellowship of his suffering. Being conformed into the image of his son. What that means, pastor? So you're going to have to go through some stuff. You're going to have to experience some. Why? Because he experienced some things as part of his resurrection. That's how you get to know him, by in the fellowship of your suffering. But I don't want to suffer. Well, you won't know him. Why are you saying, why me, Lord? Why me? That's a part of it. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection, which means if you just hang in there, you're going to experience some power. Yeah. Because in your own strength, you can't get up. But it's the resurrection power that will come like the angel came and will give you power to do what you normally couldn't do. Why do I have to fellowship in suffering? Because I'm being conformed in the image of his son. Because if he suffered, the more I suffer, I'll reign. That's what the Bible says. If you suffer with him, you shall also reign with him. So if you don't want to suffer, you can't be with him. I want the love, but I don't want the suffering part. Well, you won't have no relationship. Are you with me? My last and final point is this. The promise was fulfilled. The promise was fulfilled. You had empty women coming to an empty tomb looking for a God that was full. Sometimes, as I stated earlier, we show up empty and leave empty. Again, because we didn't come expecting. We came to see. I don't know who you come to see. (laughs) If you didn't come to see Jesus, what's the purpose? Because we ain't dressed up today. We, We normal. So nobody can boast about what they got on. It's not a fashion show. Are you with me? So how dare myself, I'm going to say me because I don't want y'all to be mad. How dare myself come to a place where I'm supposed to get filled and leave empty? It is possible, I told you before, to be in a full house and you not get filled. Because we're so focused on people that we miss God, who's here to fill you. Verse 6 says, he is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where where the Lord lay. See, when you serve a resurrected Savior, your life is confirmation of what he promised. Did you hear that? When you serve a resurrected Savior, your life is confirmation because folk counted you out. Boy, I wish y'all would be honest. Folk told you you wasn't going to make it because you didn't grow up the way they grew up. You was on the other side of the track. And they told you you won't amount to anything And the truth is, it looked like you wasn't. But when new life came, 
See, new life has a way of wiping out old stuff. <laughs> I'm going to help you. See, some folk from your old life is showing up at the tomb of your life. And they want to know where you're at. I don't know who I come to talk to. <laughs> See, but they don't realize that you're not there anymore. They showed up to see he made it. She said she had changed, so let me go back to where she used to be. But what they don't realize, just like Jesus said, he's not there. See, you ought to thank God that where you used to be, you no longer live. <laughs> yeah, why? Because he's resurrected you from that old place. Now you in a new place with a new life, with a new meaning and a new purpose. Because he resurrected you. He didn't leave you. He raised you. Here it is, 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, you are a new creation. All things passed away. Behold, all things are made new again. God says, all things are passed away. Let me help you out. The tomb was the womb that God used to birth you to new life. The tomb was only the womb. It was a holding place, but it couldn't hold you. It was only temporarily. See, the baby can't stay in forever. Oh, y'all ain't saying, let me bring it home because y'all looking at me sideways. You can't stay in the womb forever. Might be comfortable enough after a while. Get me up out of here. Why? Because I want to get in new life. And I don't know who I come to talk to, but you've been in the womb too long. It was only supposed to be a holding place. But you're trying to dwell there. You better tell God, I'm ready to come up out of this womb. Watch this. If you stay in the womb too long, you die. I got nurses in the house. <laughs> Why? Because it's not built or designed to keep you there. Temporary. God told me to tell you you've been there too long. I'm trying to resurrect you, but you want to stay in the womb. It was only supposed to be a birthing place for this new life that I have for you. I come to resurrect you. I come for you to experience life on a new level. And whatever is empty in your life, he says, I come to feel. Yeah. I am the fulfillment of the promise. You are the fulfillment of the promise. He's in you. Are you with me? He's no longer there. He's here. In you. Resurrection power. In you. Which means you have the ability to give up today. Because life is in you. Death cannot rule you because the power of the resurrection lives in you. Whatever you're going through today, you can get up. You hear me? You can get up. You have to be willing to get up. Aren't you tired of being in that old place when God has prepared something new for you? If I told you I had a new house prepared, you might like this old house, but you're going to chunk the deuces. To get new? Well, I'm telling you the same thing. That the old life that you had, God says, that's over. I have something new and better for you. Why do you want to live there when I have all of this for you? Dwelling places. In my father's house. There are many mansions. 
many dwelling places. He says, if it was not so, I would not have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, I'm not talking this Bible. You shall be also. John chapter 14, in case you want to. He was speaking of his resurrection. That you don't have to live outside when I got something prepared for you on the inside. Aren't you tired of being an outcast? Aren't you tired of settling for less? When Christ died that you may have the best? How long are you going to stay outside when I have all of this for you? Abundance of blessings. Abundance of joy. An abundance of peace and the Holy Ghost. All of this is available to you. Get up today. Come on, on your feet. New life. New life. Come on, put that on your lips. New life. Yeah. Come that you may have new life. And I come to speak to those who haven't experienced new life. I make an appeal to you today. Jesus was resurrected so that you can get up. But there is no resurrection without relationship. You have to know him. So I present Jesus to you. Will you come? I make an appeal. It's an invitation for you to get to know Jesus. I don't know why you came to this tomb, but he's not here. He's available to you. Yes. To save like you and me. That's love. Secondly, I make an appeal to the sons and daughters who you're part of family. You're part of God's kingdom, but life has happened. Some things have come and moved you from the foundation that you need to stand on. But God says, I didn't come to disqualify you or to disown you. Son, daughter, you can come back home today. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Will you open up and let me come in? Jesus says, I want to come in. I want to fellowship with you. I want to sup with you. I want to hang out with you. But I won't force my way in your life. I want you to want me. I want you to want me like I want you. That's real relationship. Who wants to be in a relationship where you don't feel wanted? Thirdly, if you're out of fellowship, every seed needs to be planted in the right soil. And if God is calling you to partner with Kingdom Life Church, we're so gracious that you're here. And we'd love to be a part of our family as we continue to advance the kingdom. So without any hesitation or reservation, if you fit one of those invitations, will you come now? Yeah. Decision-making time. Will you come? No greater love than this. Come on, bless God as they move. Come on, you need to be more excited about that. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Ah, yeah, that's it. That's it, that's it. That's it.
That song is ministering to you. Your story doesn't have to end like this. The truth is God is rewriting your story. He's rewriting your story. He's giving you an opportunity for you to be a part of him rewriting your story. Because the truth is, you shouldn't be here. Your life should have ended. With the things that you were caught up in, your life should have ended. But he says, no, that's not how your story is going to end. Woo! My God. Three days later, he says, hey, it may seem like an eternity, but it's only three days. God has the ability to raise you up. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I love what they did. They came to the altar. <laughs> See, some folks scared to come to the altar because they don't want their lives to be altered. But if you want change, you got to get out of your comfort. Get out of your comfort zone. Well, pastor, people, nobody care about people seeing you. I just told you the house can be filled and you'll leave empty. He's here. Which means you don't have to leave out empty. Come get what you came for. <laughs> Come get what you came for. Don't let opposition, don't let the thought of people stop you from getting what you came for. Why did you come? If you need to be filled, you're in the right place to get filled. He'll fill you up. Yeah, that empty tomb, he'll fill it. <laughs> he just needs you to roll away the stone. Come on. Some of your heart's too heavy. Stony heart. It's got to roll away the stone. It's my last appeal. I'm going to give you one more chance because you know you're supposed to come. That's not how. Don't let it end like this. Don't let it end like this. I'm in a position to receive. My heart is ready to Yeah, my heart is ready. I'm offering it off to you. A blessing from you. No one can feel me like you. No one. No one. No one. A blessing from you. Oh. It's not working. I release my hand. A blessing from you. Oh, my hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Yeah, we yeah, are yeah, waiting, yeah, we're yeah, waiting, we're yeah, waiting, yeah. we're waiting, we're waiting on. Sing a 
like that. Which means you have to have the right posture. The right position to receive from God. Some of us are trying to receive in wrong places. We're not in the right posture. You're out of position, and God is trying to get you back in position so that you can receive. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to bless you, but you're not in the right position. <laughs> and some of you are in the right position, but you're not in the right posture. Because sometimes you approach God with pride in your heart. With bitterness and anger and unforgiveness in your heart. You can't receive like that. Come on, you have to lift your hands saying, I'm releasing it, God. I'm getting rid of all of it. I'm taking my hands off of it. I tried to fix it, but I'm messing it up, God. I, I release it to you. Yeah. That's all your hands lifted saying, I surrender. <laughs> See, you want your hands to stay on it. That's why you keep messing it up. Take your hands off of it. Let God do the work. <laughs> Let him do the work. He knows how to work it. Yeah, it's, it's his son. It's his daughter. He know how to talk to him. Close your mouth. Stop speaking over him. Stop speaking negative over her. Let God do the work. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've been speaking negative over him. You've been speaking negative over her, so take your mouth off of her. You're planting the wrong seed. If you want something different, you got to speak different. What if I tell you you keep receiving because that's what you're giving? And you will continue to receive it because you're giving it. But if you want to change what you're receiving, change what you're giving. I don't know who that's for. Hallelujah. Hands lifted. Father, I thank you. These are your children. You know what they're in need of. God, many issues different from others, but you're the all-sufficient one. You're the all-knowing. You're omniscient. You're omnipotent. Ah, thank you for your presence. Thank you for being in our midst. Hallelujah. Thank you for living in us. Yay. Hallelujah. Shake up whatever it is, God. That foundation that's been trying to, that they've been trying to establish outside of you. Shake it up in the name of Jesus. So that they will build and begin to build on the solid foundation. God, their hands are lifted because they released. They've taken their hands off of it. They're saying, God, you know better for my life. Your plan works better. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I tried my way and I keep messing it up. God, I want your plan. Because your plan supersedes mine. Yeah. For I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Yeah, I know it may look as if you're not making it. But God says, I'm working something out for you. I have plans for you. Not to harm you, but to bless you. And bring you to an expected end. So where you are today, don't get caught up in it. Because it won't stop you or disqualify you from the end. Your destination is bright. Hallelujah. It's far better than where you are right now. There's new life over there. Yeah, yeah. Abundant life over there. A prosperous life over there. A healed life over there. I speak it over them right now in the name of Jesus. Declare and decree that they shall never be the same. That even when they attempt to go back, <laughs> to their old ways, their old thinking, that Holy Spirit, you will convict them that they will realize that they have new life. Old things have passed away. No longer looking back. I'm looking forward. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let them continue to look forward to your future that you have for them. I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Let them stir up the gifts. Hey, stir up the gifts that you place inside of them, God. Let them glorify you with their lives, God. 
that you be pleased with their offering. Ah, yeah. That you be well pleased with their offering, God. Yeah. The offering of their lives. Hallelujah. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, God. I thank you for their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm asked that you repeat after me, dear Lord God. Today, I'm your child. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died and you raised him from the dead. I confess every sin, every shortcoming. I repent. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life today. This day, my life shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you believe that, shout hallelujah. That's not how it is. Come on, that's not how it is. Complete your work yeah. in me. Complete your work. Bless God in for me, complete your work. Say, complete your work. Complete your work in me. Complete your work in me. I got scripture for that. He who begun a good work in you shall perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will never start what he won't finish. If your life is incom if your life feel incom incomplete, God says he can complete it. He'll complete it. But you got to surrender. Hallelujah. Boy, y'all own something. <laughs> complete your work. It is finished. <laughs> it is finished. <laughs> Yay! said it is finished but it wasn't complete it is possible to be finished but not complete <laughs> the truth is he was finished but he was just getting started <laughs> complete I love that he who begun a good work in you shall perfect it which means he'll mature you he'll grow you up yeah, God will grow you up. When you grow up, you go up. I be trying to rhyme sometimes. I feel like a little rhythm in rhyme sometimes. <laughs> yeah, God is amazing. I'm so glad he got up. I'm so glad that death and the grave didn't hold him down. Hallelujah. New life. Receive new life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you bless God one more time? Hallelujah. Did you enjoy service today? Aren't you glad you came? Yeah. A few announcements and we'll let you continue to enjoy the rest of your day. Um, this is a moment that I want you to take very seriously. 
Sometimes we rush through it. But giving is a part of worship. It is. How you present something to a person also determines how they receive it. Are you with me? If you don't take your time with something that you're trying to present, the person that you're giving it to won't appreciate what you're giving. Are you with me? Sometimes we present to God something that we really don't want to give him and expect him to receive it. But that's not how God works. He says, I love a cheerful giver. It's not about how much you give, but at least be excited about what you're giving. <laughs> I said it earlier. If you want to change what you're getting, change what you're giving. That's profound. He says, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. Principle. But he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Equal giving, not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. All of us are different places in life. We are. But I challenged us to give our best seed today. Give more than you've given before. Some of us have a routine. Here's what I've noticed. I'm going to take my time. We go to the restaurant. I was at Jay Alexander's eating the other day, Marcella. <laughs> and they brought me my receipt. And now they telling me what I'm going to give. They done raised the, it used to be 10, I thought. They done, up, they done upgraded that thing, man. I look, I say, okay, so in other words, they say, at least give this. Watch this now. And we have no problem giving it. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, and we say, time to give, oh, Lord, shucks you. They always want something. Mentality, watch this now. But we'll go eat at a restaurant. I'm going to take it even a little further. You tip the waitress and she still get paid. <laughs> if the man of God asks you to bless him, don't you say, you get a check. But I guarantee you, I'll be there more than the waitress. Mentality. Them folk had 1825. I said, well, look at him. I said, maybe the church need to raise their percentage. We still stuck on talking about 10. So I said, we, we, we belittling ourselves. We belittling ourselves with the 10. Making joke, but I'm serious. Mentality. We have no problem paying extra right there at the restaurant. And we don't have cheap bills. I know when I go, it's six of us. Them folk have gratuity and everything added in mind. And still get a little something, something. You know, wife be looking up something. I said, what you want to do, babe? I said, we got to bless them. She said, they got something in here. I said, give them a little more. <laughs> Why? Because they don't trust you. And God says, no. Every good and perfect gift come from me. I trust you to be obedient and give as I purpose in your heart to give. Because I love a cheerful giver. So what are you saying, Pastor? I challenge you today. Sow an uncomfortable seed. If you're giving towards your, your kingdom uh, title, 2360, sow a seed. If you're giving towards your youth village uh, uh, saving challenge, sow that seed. If you're giving your resurrection, sow that seed. But sow it in a manner now that you will want someone to be pleased with it.
if you won't be pleased with it, keep it. And that's not being mean. That's just being, God says, I want you to be excited about giving it. I don't want you to be mad and angry. I don't want that seed. And, and kingdom life don't want it either. Amen? I want cheerful givers. So now I want you to prepare your seed. Shaking up some. Oh, Lord. Choking moment. Somebody about to choke. Give as God has purposed in your heart, not, not according to what pastor say. That's why I didn't put a number on it. You give. You know how blessed you are. If you need an envelope, lift your hand. Our usher's ready to serve you. If you want to give online, we got ways you can give online. Text or give. You know, we made it convenient for you. In whatever way you want and however way you want to give, we made it convenient. Once you have lifted, uh, fill out your envelopes, and once you've prepared your seed, I want you to lift it to heaven, and we're going to pray. Now, why did, why, did, why did morale just went down? Y'all all right? Hey, man, that don't sound like you're cheerful. You excited? Hey, man. Father, we thank you for seeds to sow. God, we realize every good and every perfect gift come from above. God, some folk are challenged to sow differently than what they've been given, God. God, not based on what I'm saying, but I know you're proving yourself. You're faithful, God. If they're sacrificing their seed today, prove to them that you are more than able to multiply what they've sown. God, I'm not talking about tomorrow. Do it today. Someone needs to experience you today. Some, some 30, some 60, some even 100 fold return. My prayer is that no one would suffer today because of the seed that they've sown. I speak abundance. I speak overflow. I speak more than enough. I speak good health over them in the name of Jesus. I declare that they're the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Please be so kind as your offering basket comes your way that you would drop your offering in. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A couple announcements while we're doing that. Listen, don't forget to join us this coming Tuesday for intercessory prayer. I appreciate all of our uh, leaders and those who have been joining in with us for intercessory prayer every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Also, Word Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, excuse me, at 7 p.m. Word Wednesday. Have y'all been enjoying Word Wednesday? Amen. Amen. Say it had a little fall off. I got I got somebody that give me insight, y'all. Give me insight. Pastor, it was a little light. It was a little light this Wednesday. Oh, okay. Now, this is a person don't even go to the church. But be on Bible study. Somebody call it call it call it the, the, the uh, Bible study police. She a CI. <laughs> but I want us to be excited about the word. So it's uh this is a uh, spring break week, right? Yeah. So some of you, some of you might can break and in, break into the word. <laughs> Get you some word. Get some word on Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Also, I want us to uh Lauren Adams Foundation. Um, which is Mother Jesse Adams' uh, granddaughter. She's celebrating. She's not celebrating, but she passed away the some Lord years ago, Adams two years Foundation ago. The Lauren Adams Foundation celebrates so, the life of Lauren okay. on her 21st birthday with there a fundraising go. party and raffle. Come celebrate and remember the beautiful life of Lauren Adams by attending her 21st birthday party, fundraiser, and raffle on April 22, 2023 at 7906 Price Avenue in Baton Rouge at 1 p.m. Also, with a $25 admission fee per person, adults and children, you can eat and take part in an obstacle course, play on a trampoline, and swim in the pool. Bring your own towels. There will be a raffle for a 75-inch Samsung TV, so don't miss out. Raffle tickets are $25 per ticket or $100 for five tickets. Per Lauren's mouth-watering menu, there will be a barbecue featuring grilled chicken, grilled oysters, barbecue ribs, boiled crawfish, fried wings, fried fish, and many other sides. So bring an appetite. Her memories, legacy, and impact live on through the Lauren Adams Foundation. 
Her mission has always been to bless the lives of others, and we wholeheartedly carry this on. We invite all those who share in this spirit to extend their benevolence through opportunities, volunteering, donations, and gifts. For all of her birthdays, in lieu of gifts, Lauren would ask for money. So please give a donation to the Lauren Adams Foundation in her honor. These funds will go to underserved youths who wish to attend college. Join Lauren's family in celebrating her life and legacy on April 22nd, 2023 at 7906 Price Avenue in Baton Rouge at 1 p.m. For more information, contact us at laurenadamsfoundation.com. To donate, visit laurenadamsfoundation.com slash donate. Amen. And that foundation also give out scholarships, so they're actually our uh, seniors that graduate this year. Adams foundation uh, celebrates we have an the opportunity on her 21st to, uh, birthday with a fundraising party okay, and raffle. Amen. Come celebrate and remember the beautiful life of Lauren Adams. So we make sure that we uh, support the scholarship opportunity as well. Our seniors that are graduating here uh, will have the opportunity to apply for those scholarships as well. So. We're excited about that, and we will definitely continue as a church to sow into that because that's what our mother would want us to do, Mother Jessie Adams. And so she's she's gone but still remembered. Amen? Amen. Come on, bless God for our opportunity to give and to sow back into the community. I want to thank our leaders on yesterday. They were able to go out and give care packages to the nursing home on yesterday. So thank God for all of our leaders, Minister Baptiste and... MIT Yates and uh, Sister Wanda, and I saw a few of y'all in the picture. Thank you all so much, uh, Tosh and yeah, uh, Sister uh, uh, Misi. Uh, thank y'all so much for taking time out of your schedule to do that, to go serve someone else. And I heard that they were so excited, and, and it's something that we definitely need to continue to do. And so I look forward to that. Also, uh, Lady Trinice and First Connection, I mean, Kingdom Connection, they actually have an outreach coming up as well. You want to say something about that one, honey? Okay. What am I? Okay. Happy Resurrection, everyone. Our um, particular ministry, we will be partnering with Council on Aging. And after speaking with them, I was informed that our elderly are in need of cleaning supplies, whether that's uh, a detergent to wash clothing, bleach, sanitizing wipes. So if anyone wants to contribute to that project, that is what we will be doing. So thank you so very much. Uh, but what I'm really up here to announce is my sister's keeper. And my sister's keeper will be held on Friday, May 26th. It is actually a end of school year bash that is gonna be held for our young girls. It's an all night long lock-in. So we are seeking volunteers uh, for people who are able to stay up all night and help us to monitor the girls. Uh, it's gonna be very, very fun feel. We did it pre-COVID. It was a huge success. So this will be our first time doing it since that uh, particular time. Um, we're gonna do a lot. We're gonna have someone to come in and talk to our girls about uh, safety, utilizing the internet, utilizing those cell phones. Mothers, check those cell phones. Check those cell phones. They need to be educated on safety. There are on so many different apps, apps that you're not familiar with. You have to be on top of it to kind of know what's going on, to monitor it. Um, we're gonna uh, make sure, we're even thinking about even having a horseback riding class later, uh, early part of that afternoon. Someone's gonna come out, bring out their horses to help the girls learn how to ride, safety of a horse, uh, just fun, fun field pack night. So if you have girls within the ages of seven and 18, Please bring them out. The registration link will be placed on social media on today. Again, we need women volunteers, those who are able to stay up at night, um, keep a watchful eye because we wanna make sure that we are monitoring them and when the parents drop them off in our care, we wanna make sure that they're well taken care of. They won't need any money. Everything is gonna be taken care of. 
If you have a business uh, and would care to sponsor toward this great cause, feel free to get with us and uh, we'll connect. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I got you, God. Come on, God. Amen. My sister's keeper, I think I, I, I stayed up half of the night last time. We'll make sure we have some mail presence as well, and we will have offices on, on site. So we're great, great, great. I'm excited about that. Um, I think that's it. Come on, stand to your feet. Look at your neighbor. Hey, what are, what are cards at? What are those, what are those cards? Yeah, I don't want. Now, who needs some gas? Now, Hannah went right on back up. Look at her. You go. All right. I saw some on. All right. Put that one, two. Two right there. You say you need one, two. Uh, get some in that back. Take some to some back that back. Yeah, when you, you going to get a gas to mama? y'all all right? Thank you all so much. I pray that something was said today that your faith has been heightened and your outlook brightened. Amen. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. And Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, give us traveling grace until we meet again. Keep us and protect us throughout this week. And even as we enter to our homes today, let our homes be filled with love, peace, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen.